Hi kids, welcome to Maths with Nose. In today's video, I will be discussing a Cambridge Primary Checkpoint paper. This is a revision paper that I made from questions of different past papers, paper 1 in particular. And as you know, you cannot use the calculator for this paper and you must show all of your working. Hopefully, this will help you do a comprehensive revision of the basic topics in the syllabus right before your test. The paper can be found in the link in the description box below. I will divide the discussion into three parts. In this video, I will cover the first five topics. So the first topic is addition and subtraction. Question number 1a says find the total of 165 and 59. The word total means that you have to add these two numbers. So we would write 165 and 59 below each other like this. And then we would add it. So 9 plus 5 is 14. We have 1 remaining, so we bring this forward. And then 6 plus 5 is 11. And we need to add this 1 that we brought forward, so that's 12. And we again have a 1 remaining, which we bring forward. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So we will write 2 over here. And our answer to question 1a is... 224. Question 1b says find the difference between 59 and 165. So the word difference means you need to subtract these two numbers. So in this case we will subtract 165 minus 59. Once again, we would write this below each other. And first we need to subtract uh, 9 from 5, which we cannot do because 9 is a bigger number than 5. So we borrow 1 from 6 and this makes the number 15 and 6 becomes 5. So 15 minus 9 you can count from 9 to 15. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's 6. And 5 minus 5 is 0. And then we have 1 minus nothing. There's no number here. So it's 1. So the answer for question 1b is then 106. So question number two says, write the same digit in both boxes to make this sum correct. Here we have an addition and what we can do is we can do some tests of different numbers that we add in the blanks. So I'm going to start with one. So it's going to be then... 14 plus 31 and here you can do this in your head the answer for this is 45 so I'm going to now jump ahead and maybe use number three here so since they say write the same digit in both boxes you have to make sure to follow that instruction and in this case, we have 34 plus 33, which will give you 67. So once again, that's not it. And what we can do thereafter is add a different number. So in this case, I will add the number 6. So now we have 64 plus 36. Um, I will do this in the side. 64 plus 36. 6 plus 4 is 10. We have 1 that is brought forward. 6 plus 3 is 9. And 9 plus this 1 is 10. 
So our answer is 100, which means that in order to fill both of these boxes and make this sum correct, the digit that we need is number 6. So of course, with practice, you may have been able to tell that this number was 6 when you looked at it. If so, then great. And if not, then I would recommend you to start with number 1 and then use number 2 and then number 3, number 4, number 5 and so on. And then keep going until you get 100 as your answer. Right. So the next question says, um, complete this calculation. Um, here we have our answer in the middle. So 4035 minus a blank is 54. And in order to answer this question, what we are supposed to do is basically subtract 54 from 4035 and then we will have our answer over here. So 4035, we write 54 below it. Please make sure to write the units and the tens below each other. Otherwise, you will end up with the wrong answer. So in the subtraction, 5 minus 4 is 1. 3 minus 5 we can't do. So we need to borrow. And to borrow the number before it is 0. So we cannot borrow from 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first borrow from 4. I'm borrowing 1. So this makes it 10. And 4 becomes 3. And then from this 10, I'm going to borrow 1. And the 10 becomes 9. So now I'm left with 13 minus 5, which is 8. And then 9 minus nothing, so that's 9. And 3 minus nothing, so that's 3. So our answer for this blank is 3,981. Of course, you can do um, a double checking step. This is not recommended when you are doing your exam because you have a limited time. Uh, if you have done the whole paper and you have time left, go ahead and you know double check but when you are practicing at home just to check if you got it right you can subtract 4035 by 3985 just to see if you get the answer that is expected 54 so 5 minus 1 is 4 3 minus 8 we can't do and we need to borrow. So when I borrow, I will be left with this. 13 minus 8 is 5. 9 minus 9 is 0 and 3 minus 3 is 0. So as you can see, we do get the expected answer, which means that our answer 3,981 is correct. Great. So then we will go to the next page. Here we are supposed to look at the picture. Um, Khalid buys a kilogram of grapes, two oranges and a banana. And you can see the price tags for each of the fruits. So a kilogram of grapes costs $1.68 and 
here we need to buy two oranges so the price is given for one orange which means you need to multiply this by two and then also one banana and here the price is given for one banana so that is the number that we will use the next thing we need to do is we need to convert the cents in the orange and the banana to dollars because as you can see the answer here is expected in dollars so you should um, know by now that one dollar is equal to hundred cents so which means that then 65 cents if we want to convert it to dollars we must divide this by 100 so that would be 0 0.65 dollars for the orange and 0 0.49 dollars for the banana alternatively you can also first multiply 65 by 2 because Khalid buys two oranges so 65 times 2 is going to be I'll do this on the side 2 times 5 is 10 we're left with 1 so we bring this forward 2 times 6 is 12 12 plus 1 is 13 so it's 130 130 cents and we need to convert this into dollars so we divide by 100 which means we would move a decimal point two places back and we have 1.30 dollars for two oranges so now that we have our values what we need to do is add it up 1.68 plus 1.30 plus 0 0.49 just going to do it in a different color to make it more clear We write them below each other. The decimal points should be below each other. And again, we see that the word they have given is total. So whenever it says total, we need to add them up. So 9 plus 0 plus 8 is 17 bring the one forward then four plus three is seven seven plus six is thirteen thirteen plus one is fourteen so we write the four and we bring forward the one one plus one is two and two plus another one is three so when we add this up we have a total of 3.47 dollars right so the next question is asking you how much change would Khalid get from a ten dollar note so change is the word given here and you should know that just like Difference means that you need to subtract. When the question says change, once again, you need to subtract. So from this $10 note, to make it easy for the subtraction, 
we can add two zeros after the decimal point. We need to subtract the total cost, which is 3.47. Like I told you, we need to write the points below each other. And now in order to subtract this, we need to do some borrowing because the numbers on top is smaller than the numbers in the bottom. So I'm going to borrow from 10. Um, this would end up being 10. This would end up being 9. And this would end up being 9. 10 minus 7 is 3. 9 minus 4 is 5. Point and 9 minus 3 is 6. So our answer here for how much change Khalid would get is $6.53. I hope it's clear so far. Let's move on to question number 5. The difference in temperature between two towns is 6 degrees Celsius. The temperature in one of the towns is 2 degrees Celsius. Write the two possible temperatures for the other town. So I'm going to draw a number line here to help us or at least a um, very rough sketch of it. So we know that the temperature in one of the towns is 2 degrees Celsius. And then we know that the difference between the temperature of this town and another town is 6 degrees Celsius. But what we don't know is if the other town is 6 degrees more than this or 6 degrees less than this. This is why we would end up with two possible temperatures. So what we need to do is then find each of them. So if the other town is 6 degrees higher than this town, then we need to add 2 plus 6. The second town would have a temperature of 8 degrees Celsius. And if the other town is 6 degrees less than this town, then we need to subtract 2 minus 6 so this will leave us with a temperature of negative 4 degrees Celsius. So just to remind you how negative numbers work, starting from 2 degrees Celsius, I will fill the number line. So 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2 minus 3 and minus 4. So we start at 2 degrees and since it's minus 6 we need to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 places back and that is how we get our answer of negative 4 degrees Celsius if the temperature of the second town is 6 degrees lower. So that's that. Our answers are 8 degrees Celsius and minus 4 degrees Celsius. I will write the answer over here. Minus 4 and 8. Great. So I hope that's clear 
let's move on to the next topic which is multiplication now in order to answer questions under this the easiest thing is for you to know your times table and you are expected to know your times table by heart right you have been asked to do this from year three onwards um, so it's high time you already know it and if you do then you can answer this pretty quickly so here are some signs equal and then the greater and less than sign so we know how this sign works if the sign is in this direction the number that is on this side is higher and the number that is on this side is lower so we um, basically look at this sign and we see that the right side of this sign has a wider mouth um, so which means that the number will be bigger and the other side of this has a smaller uh, pointed area which means that the number on this side will be smaller so if I were to then draw the sign in the opposite direction what we will have is on this side because it's a small area we should have the smaller number and on the other side, because it's a bigger area, we should have a bigger number. Right. So, I'm going to quickly put the values of these up for you. Uh, if you know your times table, you will be able to fill this up in this way so 4 times 4 is 16 8 times 7 is 56 8 times 3 24 6 times 4 24 um, 8 times 2 16 9 times 6 54 5 times 5 25 and 4 times 6 24 so the easiest thing for you to do is to write this down on the side and thereafter you can fill in with your signs. So if it is the same number, you put an equal sign and here 56 is bigger than 54. So we use the sign in this direction. Here 25 is bigger than 24, so we use the sign in this direction. And here once again they are both 24, so we put in the equal sign. Right. Next we will look at question number 2 under multiplication. Millie has circled all the multiples of 4 on this grid. Shade all the multiples of 5. So 5 times table, that's 5, 10, 15, 20. Now you would see a pattern. So 25, 35, 45 and 55. 30, 40, 50, and 60. So we have shaded the multiples of 5 and Millie has circled the multiples of 4. Which of these numbers are multiples of both 4 and 5? So which means that we need to look for the numbers which are both Shaded and circled. Here we have no circles. Um, here we have a circle here. 
here and here. So our numbers are 20, 40 and 60. And that's it. So pretty simple so far. Let's move on to the next page. Now we have question number three, which is a decimal multiplication. Sorry about that. So I'm going to do the multiplication on the side here. Um, what we would do is we would simply ignore the fact that there is a decimal sign here. So if so, the number is 178. So we multiply 178 times 4. And we have the answer. 4 times 8 is 32. 3 brought forward. 4 times 7 is 28. 28 plus 3 is 31. 3 brought forward. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. So 712. But don't forget that 712 is 178 times 4. But the question is asking you to find 17.8 times 4. So if our question has a number with one decimal place over here, then our answer also needs to have a decimal point because it needs to have a number after the decimal point. So this means that our answer is 71.2 right so now that we are done with that let's move on to the next question so once again we have um, multiplication so you need to fill this grid um, in order to do this, you need help from the number that is already given. So the number that is already given is 8. And 8 times something is 72. So 8 times 9 is what is 72 which means that here we fill this grid with the number 9. Right? Because you need to use um, the help from the number given over here. 8 and 72. Now that we have found 9, we can fill in the rest of the grid. Um, so... 9 times something is 54 and 9 times 6 is 54. So I'm going to write 6 over here. And then we can answer this question. So 6 times 8 is 48. 6 times 7 is 42. And just to first fill the missing number over here. 7 times 7 is 49. Now that we have the numbers in the sides, we can quite easily fill the numbers inside. So the answer here is 7 times 8, which is 56. And the answer here is 8 times 7, which is once again 
56. So now that we have our answers, you would get the full marks. Right. So next question gives you a number sentence. 45 times 18 is equal to 90 times blank. So let's first find out what our answer is on this side. 45 times 18. So in order to do our multiplication, we first multiply 8. 8 times 5 is 40. 4 brought forward. 8 times 4 is 32. 32 plus 4 is 36. And then we multiply 1, 1 times 5 and 1 times 4. And we need to write our answer below 1. So 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 4 is 4. Then we need to add this up. So that's 0, 6 plus 5 is 11, 1 remaining, 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 plus 1 is 8. So we have 810. Now that we know that it's 810, let's write it over here. So 90 times something is 810. And this is something we can actually do in our heads because we can cancel off the zeros. There's zeros on either side and because it's a multiplication, we can cancel off the zeros. So this would be the same as 81 is equal to 9 times something. So 9 times what is 81? We know that 9 times 9 is 81. Therefore, our answer here is 9. I hope it's clear so far. So let's move on to the next question. Draw a ring around all the numbers that are factors of 42. So in order to answer this, I will write um, how we find the factors of 42. So we basically check the times table once again. Um, I'll start with a three times table because usually you are expected to know up to the 12 times table. So 3 times 12 is 36. It's still smaller than 42. So we'll go to the 4 times table. There's no 4 times anything is 42. Then 5 times table, no. And then we go to the 6 times table. So 6 times 7 is 42. And then we go to the 7 times table. So here 7 times 6 is 42. And I think we can stop here because we don't have any numbers that are um, bigger than 6 and 7. So our answers for the factors of 42 are these. And we put a ring around 6 and 7. Okay. Now we move on to division. So here the first question says Rachel wants to convert 5 over 8 into a decimal. And in order to do this conversion, we divide 5 by 8. She has started her 
working, we need to complete her calculation. So, how many 8 sign 5? That's 0. And then how many 8s are in 50? That's 6. 8 times 6 is 48. So, the difference between 50 and 48. We count from 48 to 50. That's 2. So, we write 2 over here. So, this is too small. Maybe I will do it in the side from the beginning. Um, but you are expected to fill it here uh, in small letters in the top over here. So I will just do it from the beginning. 5 divided by 8. How many 8 sign 5? That's 0. So thereafter we add a point because there's no number after that and we add a point in the answer as well. So what we do is we bring the 5 forward then we still have 50 to look at now. So how many 8s are in 50? That's going to be 6. Um, 8 times 6 is 48. So we check the difference between 50 and 48, which is 2. So we write it on top over here. Now our new number is 20. So it's the continuation from here. How many 8s are in 20? That's going to be 2. So 8 times 2 is 16. We check the difference between 16 and 20. That's going to be 4. So we add 4 over here. Now our number is 40. How many 8 sign 40? That's going to be 5. 8 times 5 is 40. There is no remainder. So we are done with this. So in order to fill in your answer, um, you are expected to, okay, I'm not able to undo that. Therefore, I will just move on. You are expected to fill it in in this space given. So we had a 2 here and then 2 and then 4 and 5. So this is what you need to fill in your answer. Great. Now the next question is a division. Calculate 96 by 6. This is a very straightforward division. So what we are going to do is 96 divided by 6. How many 6s are in 9? That's 1. 6 times 1 is 6. Subtract. 9 minus 6 is 3. We bring the 6 down. Now we have 36. How many 6s are in 36? That's 6. 6 times 6 is 36. So we subtract and we have no remainder, which means our answer is 16. Great. Now let's look at the next question where we're supposed to complete this table. And the first one has been done for you. So the division is given in the table. And we are supposed to fill the mixed number and the decimal. So in order to get the mixed number, we start the division. 9 divided by 2. How many 2s are in 9? That's going to be 4. 2 times 4 is 8. We subtract. We have a remainder of 1. 
So this is our number 4. And then 1 is from the remainder. Over here you see a 1. And the denominator is the number we divided it by. So I'll use some colors to make it clearer. So 1 is this and 2 is over here. So we are supposed to do the same thing for 17 divided by 4. So let's go ahead and do that. 17 divided by 4. How many 4s are in 17? That's going to be 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Then we subtract. 17 minus 16 is 1. So that's our remainder. So we take this number. That is our big number. And then we take our remainder. This is the numerator in our fraction. And then we take the number which we divided it by. And this is our denominator. So this is the answer we get. Four and a quarter. So you are anyway expected to know that a quarter is 0.25. So here the decimal for this is then 4.25. Great. Then let's do the next question. Next part, which is 12 divided by 5. So how many 5s are in 12? That's going to be 2. 5 times 2 is 10. We subtract. We get 2. And now we write our mixed number. So 2. 2 over 5. Now here sometimes maybe you are not able to tell what the decimal is like we were able to tell for 4.25. So in this case to find the decimal we can continue the division. I will do it now in the side. So we continue with our remainder. Um, we bring a number which is not there, so it's 0. And if we bring a number which is not there, we need to put a point. And now we check how many 5s are in 20. That's going to be 4. So 5 times 4 is 20. Then we subtract. Now we don't have a remainder anymore. And this is our answer under the decimal space. So 2 2 fifths is the same as 2.4. 2.4 is its equivalent decimal. So I am going to write the answer here. It's 2.4. Right, so now we move on to place value. Question 1 of place value says, what is the value of the digit 2 in the number 4.02? So if we take the number 4.02, 4 is our unit. And then we have the decimal and then zero, the number right after the decimal point is called our tenth. 
and then the number after that two is called a hundredth and why we call this a tenth is because this number is um, a fraction of 10. So here, since it's zero, it's not the best example for me to show you. It's basically zero over 10. But I can show you what I mean with this number two, which is in the hundredth place. So this means it's 2 over 100. And 2 over 100 is basically, go two places back, 0 0.02. So if we were to um, give the value of this 2, in 4.02, the value is 0 0.02. Just like if the number is, for instance, 4,200, 2 is in the hundreds place. Now we don't have a th, it's just hundreds. And the value of 2 is 200. So if 2 is in the 100th place, then the value of 2 is 0 0.02. So I gave a bit of extra information here. I hope that did not confuse you. So what is the value of the digit 2 in the number 4.02? This is in the hundredths place, so our answer is this. We're supposed to draw a ring around the correct answer, so here we go. The next question is asking us the value of the digit 5 in this number, 125,319. So... 125,319. Here, 9 is our unit. 1 is in the tens place. 3 is in the hundreds place. And then 5 is in the thousands place. So since the question says value and not place value, if it said place value, we can just write the answer as thousands. But since it says value, we either write our answer as five thousands or what I prefer is to give it in the numerical form. So 5 over here in the thousands place has a value of 5,000. I recommend writing this answer. But both of this would be correct. Right. Then the next question, question number 2, wants you to complete the place value diagram here. So here we are expanding this number 63,942. 6 is in the 10 thousands place. So this is 60,000. 3 is already done for you. Then 9 is in the hundreds place. So it's 900. Then 4 is already done for you. 40. And 2 is also already done for you. Great. The next topic is ordering. 
So here we are selecting uh, which of these numbers are bigger. We have already discussed how to use these signs. So in this case, 12,345 is the bigger number. So we would draw the sign in this direction. And in this case, 645,123. Here it's 123. But here it's 213. So this number is bigger. And we give our sign in this direction. Great. The next question is ordering these measurements that are given in two different units. So in order to be able to order it, we first need to convert it to the same unit. Um, let's convert kilograms to grams because it is a multiplication. One kilogram is thousand grams which means if you want to convert kilograms to grams we are going to multiply by 1000 so 1.2 kilograms when we multiply by thousand we move the decimal point three places front so it's thousand two hundred so here, instead of 1.2, um, you can write 1,200 just in like a small font, just for yourself. And then 0 0.6 kilograms is, again, we multiply by 1,000. 1, 2, 3, 3 places front. So it's... 600 so this is equal to 600 grams now that we know what these values are in grams what we can do is we can write them in order so 600 grams is the smallest this says largest to smallest. So 3600 grams is the largest. So we would write that here. And then 600 grams is the smallest. But we are not going to write 600 grams. This would be wrong because this is not the value that was given in the question. In the question, the value that was given to us was 0 0.6 kilograms so we need to write 0 0.6 kilograms then the uh, second largest value is 1200 grams once again 1200 grams was a conversion uh, to help us order this but the value that was given was the equivalent 1.2 kilograms so we need to fill this with that value and then we have the third largest number which is 900 grams so we fill this blank with 900 grams great so if you were able to do until that point it concludes the first five topics of this paper go ahead and download the paper and do the rest of it and tune in for the next video to discuss the next five topics i'll see you in the next video bye